Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1370, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-1370 is locked in a fireproof glass display case stored in Gallery 27. If the case becomes damaged by external circumstance, any container with the dimensions of at least 1.25 by 0.75 by 0.50 meters will suffice as a replacement until a new display case is available. The Ethics Committee recommends that any long-term storage case contain enough space for SCP-1370 to move freely. Level 2 personnel and higher may remove SCP-1370 from its case at their discretion, but will face disciplinary action for failing to secure it properly afterward. Description SCP-1370 is a self-aware artificial being constructed from various electrical devices and tools. It stands approximately one meter in height and is capable of moving its articulated joints despite any lack of power source or motors. SCP-1370 communicates in a monotone voice via a speaker mounted in its chest. Its head is a voltmeter soldered upside down to a neck joint, giving the appearance of a friendly smile but containing no active sensory devices. However, SCP-1370 will react to visual and audible stimuli, and its ability to do so is hampered when the head is covered or otherwise restrained. Its design appears to give more importance to aesthetic concern rather than function, as evidenced by poor center of gravity that hampers its ability to balance and walk. It is therefore believed that SCP-1370 was created as an art object and later imbued with anomalous properties rather than designed with those in mind. It can currently speak fluent American English, French, and Latin, and is capable of learning new languages. Other facets of its intellectual capacity have not been clearly outlined, as SCP-1370 is invariably hostile in all interactions with any being or object it interprets to be sapient. This includes, but is not limited to, animals, Foundation personnel, civilians, audio-visual equipment, and security cameras. If SCP-1370 encounters an object it believes to be sapient, it will attempt to engage the object in combat, while introducing itself with a variety of elaborate titles which appear to be selected at random. Examples include Doombot 2000, Robolord the Destructor, Prime Minister Sinister, and Darth Claw Killflex. SCP-1370 will often include variations to these titles based on responses it receives from personnel. Foundation staff have successfully introduced Patheticon, the Gargalmost, and Pesterbot to its lexicon. Addendum Many tests on SCP-1370's combat prowess have been run, each confirming that SCP-1370 lacks the physical aptitude to cause damage to any living being. Test 1370-8239 exposed SCP-1370 to a common houseplant with a speaker hidden in the plant's pot. After SCP-1370 was provoked verbally, it attempted to fold and twist the leaves of the plant within its grasp, before incapacitating itself. The log of this event follows. Researchers L. Allens and T. Bossum carry SCP-1370's case into the testing chamber. The case is set down one meter from a potted philodendron fitted with a small speaker. Release me insects. I am Doom Master 1370, Master of all doom. I shall be the herald of your destruction. Researchers leave the testing chamber and the case is opened remotely. Although no security risk is determined, the test requires SCP-1370 to focus on the plant rather than the nearby personnel. Observations are made via an opaque glass window to prevent SCP-1370 from attacking its own reflection. At last I am unleashed upon this earth, so deserving of destruction. All shall be rent within my pincers, all shall be trampled beneath my feet. I am Shivatron, despoiler of mirth. Hello, can you hear me? Who dares? All souls shall burn. You will feel the sharp sting of my wrath. Identify yourself so that I may sing damnation upon you as you die. I'm a split-leaf philodendron, a semi-woody shrub with large glossy leaves. 
These leaves could grow up to three feet long. You're not going to spell your doom. I have arrived. You will be crushed betwixt my digits. SCP-1370 falls over and is unable to right itself. After approximately six minutes, it knocks the pot over, which rolls into a position that pins SCP-1370's body to the floor of the chamber. Researchers enter to return SCP-1370 to its case. Okay, well, there you have it. The legendary Pesterbot, everyone. I thought I'd give a little bit of a of a break from the very serious and um, real anomalies we've been covering recently, and Pesterbot seemed like a good change of pace. Anyway, this concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. The wall cracked with the first impact. With the second, an enormous lizard burst through it, sending a glass display case flying as it shrugged off the copper-jacketed lead that impacted its back. Almost negligently, it turned around and spat acid at the last of the team desperately trying, and failing, to contain it. They were no threat. A tinny, high-pitched voice rang out in the room. Who dares to disturb a Prime Minister Sinister? I shall rip your eyes from their sockets and force you to eat them. The lizard turned its attention from the rapidly melting human towards the new voice, perplexed. You do not know the fury you have unleashed. Robo Lord the Destructor will end you. The lizard looked down to see where the voice was coming from. It was an odd assortment of parts that looked vaguely humanoid. It seemed to be attempting to pick itself up off the floor. Do not think to insult pathetic on the gargle-most creature. The odd little robot finally got to its feet and shook a wrenched fist at it. I shall rip you limb from limb. None can stand before the might of the Destructivator. Almost without thought, the lizard lazily brought its claw down on the irritating little thing, intent on crushing it. At the last moment, the little robot lost its balance, awkwardly toppled over backwards, and rolled up against the wall. The bit of clumsiness had spared it from the reptile's negligent strike. You see? You cannot harm the Invincivator. None can defeat me. The lizard tilted its head to the side, oddly amused by the pathetic little thing. It took just a moment to indulge in the novelty of the experience, as the creature teetered up to its claw and latched on with one of its ridiculous appendages. Now I have you. This Lumberator shall now tear you to shreds. The reptilian lifted his claw to get a closer look at the little thing that was hanging onto it, as the little automaton strained with all its strength, in vain, attempting to harm it. Lies and slander. The mayor of mayhem is the most powerful being in existence. The little robot hung from the lizard's claw for a moment before its grip gave out and it fell, tumbling to the floor and rolling till it was upside down. So, you want to fight dirty, do you? The lizard had tired of this thing. It was no longer amusing, just irritating. It raised its claw to strike the thing down in earnest, not settling for a lazy, negligent strike that could miss. At that moment, it was struck by a volley of rockets and half a dozen simultaneous explosions, reducing it to a lump of misshapen flesh. Behind it, the backup containment team that had stealthily crept up while it was being distracted by the hostile robot lowered their shoulder-mounted rocket launchers. You see? Doom Master 1370, Master of All Doom, has destroyed you. All right, let's get ugly here back to containment. I want it in the acid bath yesterday. Don't give it a chance to regenerate. Thompson, take Pesterbot here to storage closet 8F until the eggheads figure out something better to do with it. Dildotron shall destroy you, too. Dildotron? Oh, for fuck's sake, who taught it that one? I would like to give a special thank you to Alatreon, Zargaron, Professor Puffer, Retalius, your local fishman, Derivative, Gabriel Hawkins, Nate the Clown, Lost Boy, 
Octo Potato Football Match, HMS Lily, The Almighty Fish, Sio Deo Demnatus, The Morrigan, Karim El Ashmoui, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.